Okay, we're live. Welcome everybody out for our essential oil spotlight class. This class is special tonight. It's on Aroma Touch. Yeah. We have covered all of the single oils that doTERRA offers at this time. And now we're going to talk about um, blends. Uh, blends are just, you know, a bunch of single oils put together. And a, a lot of times some of the blends are actually do contain oils that doTERRA doesn't sell singly. So it's not like you can go out and make your own um, of these blends. So they're nice really fantastic, put together by um, professionals. I remember Dr. Hill, he says, um, you know what, if you're looking for a blend, um, to make a blend, look to see if, if it's already made for you. And I would you know, recommend using that blend instead of making up your own because you know, a lot of people have used it. Science has gone into it and, and stuff like that. Of course, go ahead and make your own blends. But if there's already a blend that exists, um, try that one. So, yep. Aroma Touch, I'll turn the time over to Jade. Uh, she's put this together. Um, I hope it's going to be good. <laughs> there are some blends that they don't have been like monster blend monster blend yeah that's right so go ahead and make your own blends for all those monster needs <laughs> um yeah, yeah. <laughs> well i want to say a few more things about blends so one year we went to a leadership retreat and they were they showed us a blend of lemon lavender peppermint and then it showed the chemical um, uh, profile of that. And then they showed us lemon and peppermint and lavender. It's the same three oils, but in different combinations. And the profile looks all different. So what Ben's saying is, these scientists, they've got it. They've got it really down packed. So if there's already a blend that doTERRA has made, go ahead and use doTERRA's blend. If not, then you know, you can go ahead and make your own. But there's a lot of thinking that goes into this, so um, I really the same, appreciate and it. And the same goes with the touch um, line of things. Mm -hmm. The touch line is just essential oils that are <clears throat> diluted by a fraction of the coconut oil, and they've worked out the perfect dilution for that chemi chemical um, soup um, mm -hmm. yeah. that they have there yeah. to help you get the most, to help it drive in the, mm -hmm. at the Nice rate of efficiency. Anyways, they've got computers and scientists and robots and stuff working on it. And pixels. <laughs> and, and pixels. They got megapixels. <laughs> it's an so. inside joke. So okay. we have people asking me so funny questions like, um, can we mix the oils? And, and I'm like, well, that's what the blends are. But sometimes it just didn't click. You know, because they're, they're like, well, if I put le uh, lemon on and then I put peppermint on, do you think it's going to interact? And I said, yes, it's going to interact, but it's going to interact in a good way. All right. And, um, you know, with doTERRA blends, it's already blended for you. So it's interacted in a perfect way for the purpose of, of what they're looking for. All right. So Aroma Touch is one of my faves. How about you guys? Have you had an experience with Aroma Touch oil? Anybody want to share? Um, is it me? Yeah, Jane. Okay. Um, when I was pregnant, I used to have these massive leg cramps in the middle of the night. You know, the ones that last for two days. Ever since, um, you know, my Stephen, my husband massage on my legs every night then I didn't have it anymore which was really amazing because it was really painful that's um, awesome yeah so when I have any friends that need help with circulation or something then I always promote aroma touch mm -hmm. perfect that's perfect and that's exactly what we're going to talk about thank you Jamie there you go there's a real story Anybody else with Aroma Touch? Why you like it and what do you use it for? Mm -hmm. I love Aroma Touch for discomfort. It's, it's a great maintenance. It doesn't take care of me initially if I'm really hurting, but it's a great maintenance. So if I, years ago I had a shoulder injury and um, the Aroma Touch is great maintenance for everyday use. Excellent. Thank you, Debbie. I heard a really great um, product experience with Aroma Touch and heart rate, too. Dr. Winterton uses it. Um, he does an Aroma Touch massage on his clients before they go into surgery, and um, it always brings down their heart rate and calms them down and helps with anxiety. So. Wow. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
that's what I read too. That's great. Thank you so much. And I know Debbie Porter, she's a doula, and so she helps people with aromatouch um, during their births and pregnancies and things. So it's okay during pregnancies, right, Debbie? It's a great one during pregnancy. Okay, guys. If they have any aches and discomforts, it's a great one. You heard it from her, okay? Yep, you heard it from me. <laughs> I tell people, don't worry, you can use it. It's better than like those drugs that we can buy. Um, I get nervous still, so yep, there you go from the professional. So it's our massage blend, um, and that's exactly what uh, it's used for mostly, but there's a few other uses. So it uh, helps with the tension, lessen our muscle tensions, it helps relaxing. Um, so it's made from cypress, peppermint, marjoram, basil, and uh, lavender, and grapefruit. Okay, and emotionally, it's the oil of relaxation. Okay, so for me, originally, um, when I first was introduced to Aroma Touch, um, it was uh, actually Nat Natalie Goddard. She says, just rub it on your shoulders before you go to bed. And I didn't realize I had uh, really, you know, tight shoulders I didn't realize that that was because it was always you know you think things are normal because it's just uh, it doesn't bother you but when you when I realize I'm like oh well maybe I can put it on my shoulders then I realized that hey I was tense and <laughs> and that really helped and I didn't realize I was hurting at all so anyways when you go to bed um, you know it helps relax your, your neck shoulders and whatever the tension you've been carrying all day and some of us are unaware that we're carrying that um, so that's awesome. Um, we have the Aroma Touch, and, um, and that is one of the eight oils in the Aroma Touch technique. So um, Debbie Gordon was just saying the Aroma Touch technique there, and it's basically DoTerra's um, touch massage with um, essential oils. So I have a link there for you if you want to know more about the Aroma Touch technique. Um, so if you can. Uh, be certified and just uh, learn about the Roma Touch um, and how to do that on your family. It's it's really it's beneficial to have a skill like that. Um, you know we have places where they charge a hundred dollars, a hundred and twenty dollars um, to re for you to receive that. So you know when you are certified, you can do that on your family and you know and your friends and you do swapsies um, and not have to pay that. So that's really good. Aroma Touch is fantastic with deep blue, so they go really well together. Um, so if people are in doubt and they're new to doTERRA, you just you know put Aroma Touch and deep blue, uh, layering it on wherever you need it. Um, so if you have extra um, tension or if you hurt your knee somehow or you, wherever you hurt yourself, you can put those two oils together. I had some ladies at church, some older ladies, one day. I uh, was very new to doTERRA and we were just um, having a, a craft night and all of the ladies got together and I just looked around, I like to do that, and I saw an older lady, she just sat there, she didn't do anything. And I'm all, do you want to, you know, pick a group and just join and I'll sit with you? And she's like, no, she's like, my hands are just so stiff and it doesn't, you know, I can't do stuff. And so I'm like, oh, and then I sat with her because she was, looks like she was alone. And then I said, hey, stick out your hands. I, I have these two oils that I can put on you. Would you like me to massage your hands? And she's like, oh, please. And so when I did it, um, you know, she made a fist with that one hand that I massaged. And she's like, holy moly, look at this, look at this. And she's like calling out to her friends like, look, I can make a fist, I can make a fist. She was so excited. And here she is missing out on all of this activity because her hands were so stiff and sore. And then she's like, the other hand too, Jay, the other hand. And ever since then, I thought, oh, how, how cool it is for me to, to kind of help people in that way. And it's such a significant um, thing for her. So and that, that's something to remember, guys. If you do deep blue and aroma touch together, massage it on hands and joints, it's a great oil. All right. Guys, if you have any questions or comments or anything you want to add, please do. Because... Uh, your stories really add to the call. Hey, is this um, blend good for spider veins? Yes. Yes. The varicose veins, is that what it's yep. called? Yeah, uh, the cypress and so the majorum. The cypress and majorum. Yeah, grapefruit. Excellent. Yeah, it uh, helps with the circulation. All right. Um, I would add helichrysum to it too, um, if people can 
you know, afford that, that would be great. Yeah. So I'll let this go through each of the ingredients so you know. Um, so Cypress is amazing for circulation. So think of Cypress um, as, um, you know, C for Cypress, C for circulation. Uh, the amazing thing that I really love about Cypress is it encourages angiogenesis. And basically that's a, a physiological process where we um, create new blood vessels. Okay, so there's like you, what you were saying, Jamie, how, you know, veins and stuff and vessels, the blood vessels, it's not, it's, it's not uh, flowing properly and it's popping out and it's really hurting and it's painful for people. Um, so this here encourages new ones so that, you know, there's more circulation, there's more flow. Um, the old ones are just kind of funky and, and it's clogged up or something, you know, something that's not quite right, not flowing. Um, and that's amazing. You, um, peppermint, peppermint oil is great for nerves. Peppermint's cooling, okay? But the other thing about it is it's in a lot of blends because it drives the oils in deeper. So think of peppermint as the driver. So it carries all the other oils in and goes in there deeper. Okay, marjoram is a very warming oil, right? And it, it's great for spasms and sore muscles. Of course, it's very calming to the body. Um, and it's relaxing. Okay, and basil does very similar things to marjoram. It's sort of like these guys are cousins and they just do similar things but different at the same time. It comes at different angles. Um, so it's good to have, you know, similar ones. Um, the grapefruit oil, it breaks down mucus in our system, but it also helps with calming and relaxing. And the mucus doesn't always, um, you know, stay in your throat. There's other you know, mucus and stuff all over inside our body. It's not just the, you know, the phlegm that we were so used to. Um, it's, there's other places. And so there's things that are blocking um, the healthy flow of blood throughout your system. And of course, lavender is calming. And what Debbie Gordon was saying that uh, Dr. Winterton, he, he does the aroma touch massage. It calms people down. When we are calm, what happens? We our our blood pressure is even, is healthier, um, our mind is calm, our body produces happy healing chemicals. So all those goodies. And also um, not just systemic, meaning the whole body, but at that area that you're massaging. Mm -hmm. So if you have muscles that are tense, it helps to calm, yeah. relax those on a, yeah. a kind of a... Um, one location yeah focusing it's on very focused so um like jamie's story that's a really good example especially when you know you're pregnant and uh, things are not just flowing the way you want it to um and that's kind of a, a biggie you know to have a cramp like that it's a big deal especially for pregnant women okay um all right so muscle discomforts okay um, any part of your body that's sore, like Ben said, it just kind of focuses that energy right there. Um, and use the carrier oil so you can massage, okay? Um, neck and shoulder and head tension even. So if your, your head is um, hurting, I, I would dump it on <laughs> and massage. Uh, it just depends on what, what and where um, you, you have it. You can use the uh, Aroma Touch Neat, um, mm -hmm. which means you can apply it without the mm -hmm. dilution. But if you're going to massage, um, it it kind of absorbs into the body so quickly that mm -hmm. you know you'll you'll need something so you can move your mm -hmm. your hands over the skin. Um, and you can do you know just a touch massage, or you can do kind of a muscle manipulation massage mm -hmm. to get the oils in there. And there's a couple ways you get the oils in there. And, you know, you can drive it in with a hot pack or you can drive it in with a massage, move it around. So mm -hmm. that'll um, do two things. Yep, exactly. And when the oils are diluted, it stays on your skin longer if you need um, more circulation on the surface, for example. And it also prevents mm -hmm. the flashing off. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. more of it's going to get into you than into the air. Yep, so think about that. If you need that, um, it's great to have the uh, fractionated coconut oil um, handy. We talk about the fractionated coconut oil a lot. I, I talk to people about different types of carrier oils, and I tell them I always go back to the fractionated coconut oil from doTERRA. 
it's uh, affordable and it doesn't um, turn off, it, uh, it doesn't go bad. Because um, some of the um, carrier oils that I've purchased in the past, if you leave it for a couple of months, you know, you it open it back up and it just kind of becomes rancid. Become um, but with doTERRA, it's, it's just been very reliable. The other good thing is when you massage it on your skin, it dries and you it absorbs, on, absorbs and it kind of dries onto your skin. So you're not oily all day long. You're not sloppy and oily. Yeah. Um, you know, like well, we've you know, tried all sorts of things like uh, olive oil, uh, grapeseed, linseed, uh, jojoba. Um, almond oil almond yeah um, and make your own body butter or whatever mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah. fraction and you can you even use a fraction the regular coconut oil that you get where it gets hard at room temperature yeah but uh, with but those protein oily. stains removed um yeah it's it's so, it's the best mm -hmm. so that's why we're well, some so much. people are allergic to certain proteins um so with the protein strain taken out of a fractionated coconut oil it's just um very uh very good and it's not uh it's something that people can be allergic to so that's that's a another benefit because you don't know yeah you know, and it doesn't smell and it doesn't have a coconut smell in it, so you can mix it with whatever yeah, and it's highly antibacterial. Yep, yep, it does. And it's clear. <laughs> and it doesn't stain your sheets. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It washes very well. And you can get it from your, with your LRP order. <laughs> <laughs> with your points. Yeah, awesome. Okay, circulation. Um, you, you know, I already mentioned that it helps with angiogenesis. So we have people who have um, uh, problems uh, with circulation, it could be like what Jamie said, uh, var varicose stains. It could be for people with problems like um, neuropathy. And uh, basically, it's just the lack of circulation. And um, this oil is amazing for that. Uh, so what you want to do is um, warm up the legs or that certain area of the body um, with a wheat pack. Um, so you stick that wheat pack in the microwave and then it warms up and then you put it on the legs. Um, and warm up the legs. Any type, any time our, our muscles are warm, it is more, um, uh, Dr. Hill says it's uh, um, excited. That's what he said. The legs are more excited, the, the cells are excited, so it's moving more. Um, so that way, when you apply the oils, it kind of um, utilizes the oils much better. Um, you need to massage it in a circular motion and find the crystals. You know, just the hard uh, little um, areas of your body, to um, of your legs, perhaps to to break up. And then it, when it breaks up, it uh, it starts to have more circulation in that area. One lady I was helping, her leg was so hard. When you stick a finger in it, it kind of dents a, a hole in her legs. And I thought, oh no, poor thing. And she was beyond pain. So she used to feel pain, but she doesn't feel it anymore. It was completely numb. And then, oh, well, this is weird because I don't feel any crystals. And then I went up further, up further her, on her legs, and right underneath her, her knee, um, behind her knees, is a blob of a mumble jumble veins. And it's all blue and purple. And her daughter had no idea. All this time, her daughter was massaging her, her the legs on the bottom and had no idea that there's something up there that's stopping the blood flow from going down here. And I'm like, this is, it's just strange. So I kind of went up and up and up and I'm like, bingo, look what we found. And the, um, the daughter was like, wow, where did that come from? You didn't even see that. So I'm like, this is where you want your aroma touch oil. That just dump it on every day, morning and night. But it takes five minutes, ten minutes per leg. But this is going to really help you, um, you know, uh, have a leg that has um, more warmth, more circulation, and uh, less pain. Okay, so that's um, circulation or with Aroma Touch. Any questions or comments there? Okay. Um, you know, I've, I tell you what, there's so much we can do with people with a neuropathy and stuff. And so um, please just uh, help people if they have that and just have them try it. I mean, Aroma Touch is not as expensive as other oils um, and tell them to give it about two or three months and they'll see a huge difference. Um, 
So connective tissues. Jamie. Um, so if this is good for um, blood circulation, would you say that it's good to use for people's heart conditions? Uh, yes, that's the next thing. We're going to talk about blood um, pressure. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Special. Not facial. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that's how you start. Um, mm -hmm. So the next one is the connective tissues. I have a few friends that do fascial tissue um, massage and it can have stretch your fascial tissues. Um, and this is an amazing oil for that. So if you have friends that are massage therapists, kind of introduce them to this oil and uh, see if they like it. Um, I've had a couple of friends that use different oils and they said that, you know, they have to kind of play with it and it depends on the, the oil, it depends on the brand because sometimes it's the same brand but different oils, um, people react. And uh, one lady in Ohio, she said that ever since she's used doTERRA, she had zero reactions. So she's, you know, very excited um, for a, about a brand that she can trust now. So um, that's awesome. Okay. Um, the other one is lymphatic support. You see how it's all connected to circulation. It helps your body um, flush out um, the toxins. So basically you can put the, um, the oil, the um, Aromatouch oil on the bottom of the feet at least twice a day just to help with drainage. Because I know some, some, um, sometimes when I um, meet some massage therapists, they, they look at me and they're like, you don't have good drainage. So I have to I remind myself to put uh, more Aromatouch oil on. Um, all right. Uh, the next thing is blood pressure. Yes, it helps with the blood pressure. And blood pressure is linked to the heart. So right, rub it on the bottom of your feet, guys. Okay. And when you see the emotion, of this, it'll make more sense why it helps with the heart too. Yeah. So that's good. So it can lower that blood pressure and help things calm down. Uh, cold hands and feet. Um, so massage it on your hands and feet. Um, put uh, warm socks on. And uh, if you have extra cold, extra, um, you know, uh, fingers that are cold, I would put uh, cassia oil and cinnamon oil into just a, another drop or so uh, into this blend um, for an extra pow. <laughs> okay, so on your hands and your feet. And if you're going to do this, consider doing it for at least a month, morning and night, morning and night. Um, I know some people get so excited and they read something like this and they think, hey, and they do it one time and they're like, oh, I didn't work. Well, I think, you know, if we change our diet and we keep um, doing this consistently, we'll see a change. The oils are amazing, um, but because it's so pure, it is, you know, released and it, um, metabolized within four to six hours. So it leaves your system. So you have to just keep reapplying, okay? And you can't uh, have an accumulation of these oils inside your body, which is another good thing. I think uh, I have to keep saying this because sometimes people are not aware and they're really surprised when I say that. Yeah. All right, so, yep, thanks to Jamie. We, uh, <laughs> she already mentioned this, but it's great for cramps. Um, so you rub it on your legs or your lower abs and just massage it, stretch out that muscle, stretch out the tissues in there. Um, if you can, drink a drop of lemon oil and peppermint oil in your water and it helps your body absorb the water better. Now, one of our friends, her daughter uh, plays for a netball team in Australia and a lot of the girls have the leg cramps and they drink a lot of water. Um, and when I mentioned that they should try and <laughs> put a bit of um, peppermint and lemon oil in their water, um, they said ever since that they did that, um, it's just, uh, you know, never had a problem with the cramping. So that was awesome. All right. Anyone want to add to this or comment? I'll add a comment. Um, when you said cramps, um, my Matthew had a lot of issues with growing pains as he was um, having his growth spurt. 
And um, he, his favorite oil was Aroma Touch. Really nice for just achiness on the body as they're growing. Wow, that's great. I have always used Deep Blue, but that's really good to, to remember, huh? Growing pains, yeah. Yeah, that's, definitely. That's good. We were just talking just a few days ago with someone who had a child who had growing pains. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Um, that's really good. Thank you, Debbie. Okay, so that is Aroma Touch. Um, to do with the body. Um, let's move on to the mind. Um, it's so funny, but when I meet people and they don't like the smell of aroma touch, and I ask them, hey, do you have a hard time relaxing? And they're like, yes, really guilty. <laughs> I'm like, this is the relaxing oil. Um, and so it's kind of funny that, you know, it kind of, they, it reveals uh, people's um, emotions. Um, so, anyway, so this is the, um, I didn't say up here, but uh, up here in the poster is the oil of relaxation. Because usually I, I type up here first. Okay, the emotions that we want to release is tense, stress, rigid, unable to relax, and inflexible. Okay, and the positive emotion we want to adopt is relaxed, balanced, flexible comforted, open-minded, and open-hearted, okay? Uh, so it's very simple to use the um, Aroma Touch oil uh, for just uh, to relieve a bit of anxious feelings. Um, just put a drop in your palms, cup it over your nose and mouth, and just inhale. Um, so just smell until you, you can feel a lot more relaxed. Um, I help it along by saying something like, I am, it is safe to relax, okay? Um, and for tense feelings, um, uh, one drop of aroma touch in the palms, cup it over your nose and inhale, say something like, it is safe to go with the flow. I give permission for me and others to be human and make mistakes. Yeah. Okay, uh, so when our mind and emotions are calm and relaxed, we think better and our gut is healthier. Um, so there's a time and place for short spurts of stress, um, but it should be only be temporary. So um, when I'm stressed, I am motivated to find solutions. So I don't allow myself to be stressed like that again. Um, and it becomes sort of a, a game for me of self-awareness, self-mastery and seeking solutions. So, anyone want to add to this comment? Yeah. Um, our aunt, you oh, doesn't like this smell. <laughs> yes. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> I told her, um, I asked her if, you know, she knows how to relax. She's like, uh, yeah, and then her daughter's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> yeah. So she, um, you know, doesn't know what sleeping in is or sitting down and watching TV. She doesn't know what that is. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's hard, isn't it? Um, but that was me. I feel like that was me ages ago. I was a pretty Nazi. Well, tonight... Um, Very pretty. We have uh, our kids helping with dinner and um, my Genevieve, she decided to make guacamole with very, very hard um, avocados. And you know, in the past I would have freaked out and said, Genevieve, you can't cut all those avocados up because they're so hard. But uh, like this, this, tonight I just looked at her and I smiled, I think because I've been typing this up and had a Roma touch all over me. I'm like, this is a big lesson for you today. You know, do you think that this is gonna work? You know, here I am going, oh, this is cool. We're wasting all of these avocados. <laughs> um, and It'll like, turn out in the end. No. And, you know, it's so hard. It's just trying to slice it and just trying to figure out a way. But it's so cool how we can not be tense about things that it's not going our way and not going right. So it's cool. It's good to be relaxed. Mm -hmm. It's like a fear that if we do relax that things won't, you know, work out. Like things will be bad or um you know things won't get done and 
the place of being nurse and you know yeah lots of right. negative things I guess yeah and then we have to realize what that is and that's perfect because it leads me to the next thing here so the moral of the story is kick back and play some xbox <laughs> I'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> that, that's been solution for stuff. Um, so this is the oil of uh, relaxation. So what is uh, lavender and um, yeah. and serenity? Are those not all also oils? How does that compare? Do you wanna... Yeah, I think serenity is like more of a sleep <laughs> sleep oil. Just super oh, relaxed. This is more it, it just calms your anxious feelings. Yeah. This is your tension, tense, um, and uh, relaxing that tension. But I don't know. Some sometimes it's just different. But the emotions we've already mentioned is about being inflexible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the other one is allowing yourself to be serene. Gosh, the English language is so complex. <laughs> just trying to stump your sweetheart. No, no, not, <laughs> not stump one bit. <laughs> about past tense. That's about being tense. Yeah, that's about tension too, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. All right. So spirit. Okay. So I know that God wants me to be happy and not fearful. Yes, I got that right. But the fearful feeling will help me know that I'm lucky in faith. So anytime um, I have this, you know, overwhelming feeling or fearful or anxious feeling, it gives me an opportunity to, you know, step back and let the divine take over and drive. Okay. And to remind me that I'm safe. Okay, so, um, so that I'm not going to take over the wheel again. Um, and I, you know, I have to allow my inner compass to say, Jay, you know, you're not divinely aligned right now. Um, let's figure this out. And uh, what I do at that time is to identify some, some false beliefs and start talking to myself and uh, talking myself out of it. Okay, and so I'll share some of those <laughs> thought process with you. And they'll help you because I, um, I do this energy healing with people and it's, uh, it helps people realize that, you know, once you get the skills down, I mean, it's going to help you. So here, Jamie said, is, you know, you know, you guys, we're sisters, by the way, you didn't know that, <laughs> you know, now. Um, so we think alike. So here we are, examples of false beliefs. If I don't do it, it won't be done. Okay. Or people don't do it right. Okay. So <laughs> Stacey's laughing. Um, if I don't worry and stress, then things might get worse. Um, or I carry a lot of responsibility. The other false belief is there is just not enough time in the day to rest and play. Wow, you really need this, honey. It's <laughs> gonna be great. Hey, I'm an expert at this. <laughs> I know this. <laughs> um, all right, so here's some of the logical reasoning how I get myself out of this. So let's go with the first one. Um, I, if I don't do it, it won't be done. <laughs> um, it sends a message that everyone else is incapable, unintelligent, or and untrustworthy, or something, right? Um, kind of uh, communicates uh, that you know they're not that uh, capable, um, and so we need to clarify what we really want and communicate it clearly. So for me, I have to sit down and go, wait, what? It, what is it that I really want to be done? Okay. Because sometimes you have an idea in your head, you haven't conveyed it. And of course, they don't know to read your mind, right? So then, of course, they don't know how to do it right. <laughs> okay. Um, so, sounds also like catastrophic um, thinking, where yeah. it's like, um, if this doesn't, if uh, this puzzle piece isn't there, then everything will fall apart oh, and, and it won't be done. Yeah. Do you yeah. So, I, when I do energy healing for my friends and I see that, reflected back I laugh because I'm like yeah I was like that too um so yeah allow yourself to be okay with other people putting their own flair into things so you know just step back and um, communicate what it is that you really want a picture of what you expect but then you know allow them to kind of add to it and, and make it even better so that's the opposite of micromanaging mm -hmm. yep opposite I'm going to say that if you're going to be a Nazi about it nobody's going to help you yeah, that's right and you know if right. your husband doesn't do the dishes right just put it back in the sink <laughs> don't complain no don't complain about it just put it back they'll learn yeah and I, I you know when the kids do dinner and stuff I, I tell them what it should look like but then they can do their own flair and they're allowed to mess up 
but in an hour we've had some really great creations right because they, they've added their thing to it and hey I don't have to do dinner so that works <laughs> okay the next one um, people don't do it right so it sort of goes along with the first one but um, sit down and identify and define what is the right way <laughs> I have some friends that are really stuck on it I'm like what do you mean right what is the right way and they're like um um <laughs> oh, I just you know they have to put it in words and there could be lots of right ways. yes and there could be lots of right um, and imagine if it's done wrong what's the worst that can happen you know the meal is not done properly big deal the toilet's still dirty yeah the toilet was still dirty hey no one's i thought you were going to do a um thing on how to clean toilet for men oh yeah we should do it <laughs> do a video on that <laughs> that was a yeah. brainchild that never got off the ground <laughs> <laughs> so is it really that bad ask yourself that question is it really going to be that bad um and most of the time we react uh because we haven't really thought it through and you know, smelling this aroma touch, kind of calming down, thinking about things a little bit, it kind of helps. Um, and then you know, you don't have to stress anymore um, when the same situation comes up again. So define uh, what you will be happy with. Um, I had a lady, she's like, oh, it's just not perfect, it's not right. And I asked her, I said, is this world perfect? Is there anything in this world perfect? And she's like, um, no. And I said, oh, it's kind of sad to not ever, ever be happy, huh? You know, because she thinks that if things are perfect, then she can be happy. So she's holding happy over there, away from her, never ever going to be happy. And then when we realized that, we kind of laughed and thought, oh my gosh, no, I'm just going to choose to be happy now. Um, you know, even if things are all over the place, I'm just going to choose because happiness is a choice. Um, and then you have to kind of tell yourself things like, I allow others to shine and be creative and make mistakes. Yep, it has to be safe for others to make mistakes. When we not be perfect. Yeah, and when you are hard on yourself because you make mistakes, it's so easy to be hard on others. Um, so when you're more relaxed about you making mistakes, it's easier to let your kids make mistakes and other people make mistakes around you. So, yeah. And it's, you know, as, as a business um, leader, builder, um, it's, we, we deal with people all the time and nobody's perfect. And, it's so much nicer and people, yeah, to just go, yeah, that's all right. Nothing yeah, different. people are not perfect. They have yeah. their problems and they're going to be sad sometimes and it's not really, you can't expect people to be happy all the time and always strong and confident. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. So the other thing here, if you don't worry and stress, things might get worse. I think that was one of the biggest things um, that I was I, that Ben taught me when we first got married, because he was smiling at that stuff, he was joking about stuff all the time, and I'm like, there's so many things to be worried about. Why aren't you more worried? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, what am I saying? <laughs> it reminds me of that mouse in the tail with us grow. It's like, if you just understand, there's so many wonderful things to be afraid about. <laughs> so much wonderful stuff to be scared of in this world yeah. it's just not embracing it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so i had a i have a friend that was me but worse and then i'm like i so want you to have this book it's like called wimberly worried this little girl she looks around and things to be worried about i mean things she can worry, imagine worry, worry. Yeah. too much worry. yeah and so this little grandma in the background she's always relaxed she got her sunnies on and she's got her roller blades on and it's like here she's the opposite so it, it really is funny when you look at that look back and you think uh, why was I insisting on worrying so much um, so if we can't see things better if we can't see things in our minds that's good then we're never going to manifest it and the problem with the worrying is you're focusing on the things that you want to disappear mm -hmm. really you're just looking for more of it and you're Creating more of it. Creating more of it. And you, you know, you're looking for reasons to say, hey, this thing exists in my life. And you're just trying to, you know, look for evidence of it. And that's just, you're going to find it. And, and I think working with a lot of people really helped me see that. Uh, so I have some really anxious people and they're so worried about everything. But, and I think there's things that I never can come up with, um, but they have come up with um, to be worried about. And you know, chances are that something's gonna go wrong with their shipping. 
chances of something's going to go wrong. When they call doTERRA, they'll find a, a brand new newbie or something. That person won't know how to help them. You know, there's so many little things that just happen. And I just step back and I'm thinking, wow, you just attracted all that. That's incredible. It never happened to me before. But, you know, it's because they, they're looking for it. Because they haven't developed or created what world they want to see, right? So when we get into this situation, you really have to step back and say, let me sit down and write down what my definition of happy is or, or good is or, you know, what if it's better? You know, things, think, uh, things might get worse. Like Jamie was saying, our auntie, so much to worry about because otherwise if I don't worry, things might get worse. But what if things get better? Have you created that in your mind? If you don't see it, you're not going to create it. All right, so I think spending just as much effort to, to create that is much more profitable. Okay, what do you guys think? Yeah? What an excellent discussion. Thank you. <laughs> this is so great. And the other thing too, ask yourself, uh, do I believe that stress is necessary to get things done? Okay. I think worry is a pretty useless feeling. But, I mean, everybody sort of worries because they don't actually think about what they're feeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That self-awareness. Well. Yeah. So if we use our, mm -hmm. yeah, if we use our um, I guess, energy to figure out a solution, then we would worry less. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all that energy, yeah. problem-solving energy, right? Yeah. Um, question? Lacey, you want to say something? Oh, I was going to say, um, at first, I used to not be so worrisome, but I was, and I would stress. And then I realized, you know, through some of these questions, like, well, why Why am I worried? What do I, ha why do I, you know, it's going to be okay. But I realized that... <laughs> I can honestly have, it was easy to see that I got it from my mom. And when I started posing those questions to her, you know, it kind of, it's like, she was like, what? Well, I guess, no. And I was like, yeah, I always tell you, you know, if I talk to you about something, sometimes I'm hoping to feel better. And instead I wind up worrying even more, but is it doing either of us good because we're not in control? Like it's going to be okay. It always works out. So why are we going to sit here and worry about it? Let's just, have faith in like it it always works out so it's not going to suddenly not work out you know and it's funny how in months and then months later you can see how it, it lessened and then now it's to the point where like well do I really have to stress like I don't really have to stress so much you know it's it comes up every once in a while and like we've had some big bumps just happen and I literally told my family wow, if this was a few months ago, I would be like losing it. I would be in my wits end. So like not sleeping and all, not, not hungry, like not even knowing what, you know, and I'm just not that person. And it's like um, such a, re a relief, like a better way to live, you know. But I don't think people realize that if they looked at these questions and started to change that, it can really be simplified to let go of the anxiety and a release because it's not like you said making you important it's not necessary you know things are um going to work out and you can rely on others you know they're, they're going to do just as good of a job as you if not close to it they're going to want to and they're trying to please you as well you know so really um i think it's a great way to show people like you can use this it's going to help you to de-stress and start thinking of these things and, you know, start trying to change your thoughts because you'll find the oil will relax you and you will try to train yourself and your brain to not go there and your life can become so much at ease, you know? Yeah, I like what uh, Stacy said. It could be just the way we've um, been taught and grown up and this is how we respond to issues by freaking out. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's how people have responded. So if we we change it for our family, then we'll change it for for good. Okay, so that's excellent. Um, the next thing, um, can, you, what can, you... can I just say, um, 
Stacey, when I speak to my mom, I also feel the same way <laughs> because <laughs> it's like, you know, you're trying to talk this out with someone else so that they could help you problem solve, but instead they just keep going on about more things that you should be worried about. So, um, and I found that I have, I guess, developed um, a harder skin when dealing with my mum, especially, right. um, because I would stop and breathe a couple of seconds, mm -hmm. think about, you know, her intentions um, and then realise, hey, you know what, she's just trying to help me and um, I'll just say to myself, um, thanks, mum, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, I think, you know, perhaps I can do it like this, don't worry about it. Um, and then I say to myself, thanks for letting me know that I'm stressed, but, you know, thanks. <laughs> Instead of saying, shut up, you know, shut up, you know, I don't need to be stressed, but be nice to yourself and say, thanks for letting me know. I think everything will be okay. Yeah. So, it's a really good skill to, to be able to re yeah. resolve it in your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Being reactive. And, uh, okay. Be less like snappy, snappy. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I kind of had to go through that and then I kind of shared less and that way I could just think of it on my own. And I would also talk to someone that I knew would not be worse. I'm like, Jason's just laid back, my fiance. So I just thought, I'll talk to him. Me and him will come up with a solution. Then I'll just share that with her and let her learn to do that herself because I can't change it for her, you know. But it's, um, it's amazing because in my process of doing that, I've noticed that my kids that were anxious have started to, like, talk and realize they can just calmly talk to us and it'll be better too because they've heard me and him talking. So yeah, I kind of had to realize, cause I, I was like the same as you where I kind of was like, uh, you know, and then I just realized, you know, I can solve this and I don't have to rely on somebody else to talk it through. Like my mom talking in a positive atmosphere, not that she's, you know, but like you said, she's got best intentions. It's just not working yet for her to help me. But, um, but yeah, I think that, she will eventually you know get that way too because I see like I said my kids are picking up on it but yeah I think that's probably a lot of people's common issue that when they do have anxiety they go to someone else that's just as anxious and it doesn't help <laughs> <home. laughs> yeah and this is a good skill to work it out because sometimes you don't know what's happening and it's just blah, 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 boiling up and so you ask your subconscious some questions and then you answer and I like just to write. Um, and then when I, you know, I can figure things out a little bit more and then I talk to people because then otherwise I'm just blabbering. Um, so how about this one? I carry a lot of responsibility, you know, because we're talking about shoulders and, you know, if you guys have you know, sore shoulders, that's, that's you, right? Um, do I have to carry that responsibility? So am I responsible for so-and-so's happiness? You know, or do I let other people carry my happiness? So I'm happy when you do this for me. No, don't give that away. So then you realize and you answer those questions for yourself. Uh, do I believe God made everyone equal and capable? Okay, God's got their backs too. So I tell some of the leaders, I said, you have to allow people to be uncomfortable sometimes. Your teammates will survive. You know, don't jump in every single time they freak out, right? Because then we're all just going to jump in and, you know, drown together. I step back, uh, right? Um, God's got their back too. And then how can I learn to be more trusting and confident in others and the universe? Right? So, you know, think of ways that you can say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. When This is what it's going to look like, me being trusting. I'm going to spend half an hour crocheting and watching my favorite movie or reading my favorite book and just zoning out, okay? Not answering the, the phone um, whatever it is, this is how I show it. And even if it's half an hour, you think, ah, okay, the universe didn't fall apart. Woo, I did it. <laughs> okay, so that's how we, we can uh, grow that confidence. Um, do I need to have, uh, do I have a need to be needed? That's another thing too. Sometimes people complain and complain and complain, but they want it. You know, I've got so much to do, so much, you know, because that's such a need because they don't know what their purpose is in life. So if they have a need to be needed, then I've got a purpose. 
So, you know, now since we're picking on our moms, you know, Jamie and I, when, our, when we got married and moved out, my mom grieved in her own way. And she had no idea what to do um, with herself because she's not needed anymore. So we had to kind of help her find a hobby or something to do. Um, <laughs> so that was interesting. I have children. Yeah, and then pop out children or something. And here's something for her to, to worry about. Uh, so anyways, uh, do I have a need to be needed? Uh, do I find a sense of importance in being busy? Okay. Mm. So is that important? Uh, some ladies really like to be busy. They like to tell everyone that they're busy and they like to come across as busy. And I, you know, and when so I they're do, just busy bodies for the sake busy. of show. Yeah. So if someone's cooking soup or something at church, yeah. they're in there. If something's happening, they're there too. And, and then so they're it busy. It could be a waste of time. It yeah. could be bothering people and yeah. everything like that. And then I don't realize just... that, but you ask yourself that question, is that me? And am I, you know, finding importance in being busy? You know, and then I'm carrying all these, these responsibilities unnecessarily, okay? So ask yourself another question. How can I delegate and share my load? Okay, do I need to be a victim or a martyr? I, I know. What few, can I stop yeah. doing? Yeah, I know sometimes we don't realize that we need that. Um, do I benefit somehow? Do I benefit somehow with this belief? Okay, and what can I control? What can't I control? So when we kind of filter in our heads, little the answer to these questions, then it's like, oh, you know, whoa, I didn't realize I was thinking that. <laughs> what can I control? Or this, what, what can't I control? This, but why am I trying to control this? Why I know I can't change that. Oh, let that go. Um, as soon as you can realize that, um, you know, your brain just clears up and, you know, you, you don't have to carry that stress anymore and that anxiety. All right, so that's that. What do you guys think? <laughs> Is that kind of like feeling overwhelmed? Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So why do I have to carry all that? You know, and you think, oh, that's not my job. Check, cross it off. So sometimes people like to dump things on you and say, problem, huh? You know, we have that because we're leaders. But when we realize what is ours and what is theirs, we just, you know, put it back on them and go, oh, you, you call them, you know, tell them this or whatever it is. And then it's not our problem. Okay. It, we don't want to for people to say no. Pardon? I think it's, sometimes it's hard for people to say no. Uh huh. And then ask yourself, why? Why can't I say no? Because I feel responsible for their happiness. If I say no, then they'll be sad. And it's a skill, and sometimes it requires a bit of bravery. Yeah, and you're going to practice it. I think being overwhelmed is if you don't address these things, that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Overwhelmed. Oh, breakdown caring too much. you'll feel like you're abused you'll feel like you're unappreciated mm -hmm. yeah and that's why i'm saying ask yourself do i need to be a martyr or a victim right so some people like that and they they have a big messy home they have a big messy life and they they need it they don't want to clean it up right because it's just something that is they're used to okay so yeah you might benefit somehow Okay, I'll tell you why. One of my friends, she, she wants to grow a business and she wants to change. And then I asked her to do certain things and she's like, yeah, I'll do it. And then she does it. And then she tells me that there's a conflict inside of her. And I said, tell me about that conflict. She said, well, if I'm richer, if I make more money, Jade, then people won't feel sorry for me anymore. And they won't give me free stuff. And I thought, huh? And she's like, I know, right? It just doesn't make sense. But all her life, she's allowed herself to receive stuff. And then I looked back and I said, one of the first times I met her, she said, oh no, we don't have enough food for our, for our kids for school. And I remembered, you know, going out and buying groceries for her family and delivering it to her. And I thought, oh, you know, I naturally did that. And I didn't really think that. Um, so, you know, that was, that was my, my friend in Australia. And then when she realized, she's like, oh my gosh, you know, I don't know why this, that, that doesn't make sense and this doesn't make sense, but it's good to talk about it. And then she's like, of course, I want to be on the giving end. What am I thinking? You know, but her subconscious wants more of this attention because it's always had attention by being poor, by being martyrs, by being a victim, right? And so she had to realize, you know, we're going to cancel this thought process. So that was funny that we kind of found that out. Yep, so there's some benefits. That's why our subconscious wants that. All right, so the last thing here is... There's just not enough time in a day to rest and play. 
Um, you know, we do whine and complain about that, but you gotta ask yourself, why do I wanna complain about that? What's the reason, okay? Um, so maybe the reason is you haven't planned playtime. You haven't planned rest time. That was my problem. You know, I want to, but I didn't plan on it. And that was weird. Um, and then you know, ask yourself, why don't I plan to play and rest? Um, because, you know, in my mind, I'm like, if you're idle, that's not good. You have to be productive. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and so I have to kind of add value to play, add value to rest. Um, and then, you know, I tell myself, well, how can I be still and hear God's voice when I'm so caught up and distracted in my busyness? And then I gave me a reason, yes, yes, to, to be still, to be restful, okay? Because um, you, you've got to convince yourself, <laughs> then you'll change. And a good essential oil for this is wild orange. Yeah. Isn't yeah. it? The oil of abundance. Uh -huh. So it'll make you feel like you have an abundant time. Mm -hmm. yep. You can put things away, you can rest, you yeah. can, you know, finish up your day and, yep. and Call have it some fun. Night. Yeah, so wild orange, add it to this uh, Aroma Touch oil, that will be great. Um, and, I, and I tell myself, if I don't learn to treat me well, and, and you know, if I can't honestly love myself, how do I love and um, treat others better? You know, um, my love will be hollow. So you know, in order to fully, or properly love others, I really have to get it down and be able to love me first. So um, that helped me re recognize that, yeah, I can take time for me too, all right, without feeling that guilt. All right, so just uh, some of the ideas to help you talk to yourself and resolve <laughs> some concerns. So that's all from me. Anybody want to add anything to that and comment or something? Is that that's helpful? Fun. So that, that's Aroma Touch. Aroma and as, touch. as you guys know, there's, there's always, Jay's always put together this 10 uses of Aroma Touch oil. Um, fantastic. You can download these. Are, these are all PDFs. So we'll continue to add to that. So thank you, Jade. Thank you, everyone, for place. coming. Thank you for the people that are listening to our podcast and on our YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. And as always, you, know, you can listen to the old ones. All the information for that is on jadebalm.com. You can look at all the old videos and stuff as well. I just quickly want to take a moment here to show you our um, oil uh, classes, our new member, um, five wellness product classes. Uh, so if you are new to doTERRA, please um, visit um, my website here and just uh, click on new to doTERRA um, under the natural uh, so health solutions and uh, you'll find uh, five new videos of um, the different classes that we teach. So that's going to be your foundation um, of you know, learning how to use the products and um, applying it to your life. It's, an, it's a lost art form, so you've got to give yourself about two months to kind of understand the oils and how to use other natural solutions for your health. But once you get it, you've got a skill for life, and it's going to be great. So we have the introduction to essential oils. Um, we've got Welcome to the Terror, which is kind of a um, membership maximization. Help you get the most out of your account. And then we have five classes. Family Wellness, Cleanse and Restore, Maintain Healthy Well. Healthy wealth, <laughs> uh -huh. healthy weight, uh, reduce toxins, and uh, green clean. Yeah. So that's one, two, three, four. Oh. Hormones. Oh, yeah, health and hormones is another one. Yeah. Each of these has their own page, so you can um, you can look down here and click on like the family wellness class. Um, open that up, and that will list out all of the. Um, information you need if you're going to teach that wellness class to someone so the idea is that there's five classes and these are all handouts that you can download and just click on them you can download the handout that you can bring to your class and it has tick marks where your class attendees can you know tick off things as they learn them um, and then at the bottom it, uh, is a place for where they can go to learn more jbaldoncom wellness which is 
which is this one that needs to be changed. Um, so there's a video and there's all the information there. Okay, and also you can uh, leave some comments in, at the bottom there. You can just do it with your Facebook account. So there's five of those. All right, thank you so much, you guys. And that's all we have. Unless anybody has any questions or wants to make any comments, we'll go ahead and wrap things up tonight. Oh, one more question. So you don't do the flip chart thing anymore. You can use a flip chart, but we don't do it. Um, all we use is that handout. And I'll, I'll click yeah. on it to you can see what it looks like. Here's a handout. Um, it's just got the new member maximization in the beginning. This is what we do. Um, to teach the introduction, introduction class, we use a natural solutions um, handout from doTERRA. Um, but to help people understand their membership, we'll just go through this his first two pages with them. So I help them unbox, help them get some resources, connect with people, understand LRP, have this discussion with them. What are their intentions with doTERRA? Do they want to refer to people? Do they want to you know, build a part-time income? And then we talk about the wellness product classes and we tell them, we say, look, if you participate and um, go through each of these five classes, we'll give you a gift. And our gift that we offer to our people is between 20 and 30 points, any essential oil that they want on the planet. We get that gift for them. Yep. Here we can put together a six month shopping plan. So that's helping them. Uh, Cause sometimes people are overwhelmed. They're like, I want this, I want this, I want this. I'm like, it's okay. Just write it down on this list and take it one month at a time. Put together a routine. Um, and then there's all the wellness product classes. It's all in one handout that we give to people. So um, we'll uh, end our recording and I'll tell you a few more things here. Uh, thank you very much for watching our video. So pause there.